book your driving lesson now at dla-driving.co.uk. And welcome to Owen the Town. I'm Lou Gregory, and here's what's coming up today. Luton relieved Turf Moor with a one all draw after a brilliant defensive display and a pretty good attacking display as well. It meant that we share the points at the weekend. It was a very good draw. We'd have definitely taken that before the game. So today we'll discuss that game in a little bit more detail. We'll also look at Dan Potts with the goal at the weekend. We're basically asking the question do we need to replace Cal Naismith or did we already have him in our squad? Is Dan Potts the person that can just slot into that spot and take us forward this season? That's the question we'll be asking today. Uh, Bataro's back on the podcast today, everybody. Hooray. And Hooray. Dave's with me, as Thank always. You, Evening, guys. How are you? Evening. Very well. Hello. Very well. Nice Good to see you back, Bataro. Yeah. Is it? Oh. Is it, though? Yeah, last week on the podcast, I said that you were going to bring Roman this week. But Did you actually? Yes. Yeah, sleep in time. Uh, he's, he's asleep. Proves that I didn't listen to it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, thanks for listening. I, think I got through five minutes of fun asleep. That's what I told you the other day, anyway. Yeah, he bored the tits off me, mate, to be fair. So, no, nah, I'm joking. <laughs> um, but no, look, it's good to be back again, as always. Um, what did you make of Saturday? Loved it. Yeah. Yeah, it's brilliant. It's I, it's brilliant. Like it was an away it? game. It was an away day. We had a good laugh. Um, yeah. Said hello to a few people. Atmosphere was excellent inside the stadium, and the performance was brilliant. So, you know, and it, and it drive home quite easy. So at the end of it all, a good day all round. It could have been topped off with an extra goal. Mm-hmm. It would have been even better. But you know, we can't complain, can we? But no, you're right. Overall, it was a good, it was a very good away game. It was decent. I it's enjoyed just, it. It's nice when you look at. Uh, I hate you doing this. To how far we've come, rubbish. But we left extra early yesterday because the last time we were up that way was Accrington away for that <laughs> yeah. that first game of the season where we were like. So delayed in traffic, we got there at like five to three. Just made it. So we were like, yeah, this time we're getting nice and late. But when you look at that difference between that first away game of the season that year, away at Accrington Stanley, and then this year we're playing relegated Premier League Burnley Mm -hmm. in front of 22k fans, Vincent Company's first game. And we went there and we really held our own. Yeah, Yeah. we were brilliant. It was just like, for me, as an oldie, it was like Luton used to be. It was brilliant. You know, you're going up there and, and you're, you're competing at the same level and you're not just competing, you're giving a really good game and we could have come away with all three points, literally. Yeah. You know, I mean, we def- our defence was brilliant Saturday, absolutely brilliant um, and we took our chance. Well, some three-word reviews of Burnley 1, Luton 1. Dave says, we'll take that. Ben, very solid performance. Mark says, unbeaten run continues. Kev says, cracking first half. Dave, Amari, Bell, sublime. Richard says, top six performance. Uh, Lee says, reached another level. Jamie says, cracking away day. And Matt says, well-earned points. What was a cracking first half, weren't it? Kev says. Yeah. yeah. I mean, what a start. You couldn't hope for a better start, could you? It was brilliant. And uh, although it, for me, it seemed to go on forever, the first half. I don't know why. It just, just did. I thought we, we were really good. And like I say, the atmosphere was brilliant. The fans, our fans were fantastic, That uh, uh, you know, with their noise. It was just one of those days where you just thought maybe... We're going to kick on and 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 take the three points at the at the point at the very start of the game, and we'd certainly spoiled their party a bit, didn't we? Oh, hundred percent. Their first home game of the season. I think they were expecting probably to win. They probably were expecting yeah. to win. Yeah. I mean, look. I mean, we probably didn't expect too much, but I mean, we know we're not a bad side, so we were always confident we could get something out of the game. I mean, I kept saying to way up. I said, I've got a good feeling about it today. Yeah. And look, it just proves. I know you keep, keep saying it, how far we've come, but it is really a matter of that now. It's You look at us now and you think, we're not spending big, we're coached very well, and we're doing things, we're doing bits in this division. And do you know what? I, I don't know whether Burnley will be up there at the end of the season or not. I'm going to put it out there. I'm not too sure. I'm sure they will be if they recruit a few more, but look, I don't care. At the same time, they have still got players in there that are of a good standard quality. And we have matched them. On, on our preview uh, last week, before the game, 
I sort of said it was parachute payments, but they they transferred a lot of players, haven't they? They've made a lot of money from selling on, and they've res- mm-hmm. they've reshaped their team, which is true. And you know they've got a good manager there, and you know how they're going to set up their store. But what yeah. I think we went with a really good game plan, and I thought our press was really good. I thought we was on them, we was quick, and uh, we deserved everything we got that day. And it's just the composure as well, which. You look at the, the first goal, which we'll get onto in a sec, but the composure from Bell just to knock it around a defender was just unreal. And it's like you said, we just seem to have gone up a level and it's it's just really nice to see it. It's just really nice. Can I just say, Amari Bell has also gone up another level as well. Oh, he's unreal. He isn't? has been unreal. I think since, you know, turn of the year, the guy is just, I don't, I don't know, he just looks a different breed, doesn't he? And just makes you think, all them Blackburn fans that laughed yeah, at us yeah, when yeah. we signed him from him. And he's he's probably one of the best left backs in the league. Oh mate, easily the way the way he got the ball and he was turning people and he was so confident as well and little shimmies, little drop of the shoulder. He, he didn't give a crap, did he? He just <laughs> he was doing it. But it's you so think good. why is he different now here than he was there? It, it must be the coaching, right? It must be the person he's probably because he's playing but, a more fluid like, formation. Yeah, as well. and also, but if your coach believes in you, mm-hmm. then surely you you perform better, maybe. There was one change to the starting eleven. Then I think wasn't it uh, Cornick in for Morris from. The uh, Birmingham game last week. Were you surprised at that or? No. I mean, I think we all thought, well, I thought Cornick probably should have started last weekend against Birmingham. But look, I don't think we can be surprised. I mean, I think a lot of people are expecting Woodrow to start the last two games or whatever. I mean, you know, depends how you play it. But no, I mean, Cornick for me, he has to be given a shout this season because of what he did last season. I thought the guy was unreal. You can't just drop him, can you? Or no, I don't, I don't think you can drop him, but I thought, I, to the same extent, I thought Morris had a brilliant game. And, mm. you know, I, oh, ex- yeah. I expected him, you know, a proper number nine for me. And uh, I, I expected him to, to start. So I was a little bit surprised, but I'm not disappointed the Cornick side at all. I guess the beauty of it is now with the five subs rule, it, it's fine to keep him and, mm. and bring him on in the second half to, to make change, which is what we eventually did, but um, didn't quite just full for us did it at the weekend but let's talk about the goal that made it 1-0 Dan Potts we actually made a really good start and the commentator said that as well on the on the highlights that you know Luton a really bright start here four minutes in we have, a, we have a couple of corners and it's the long throw in the end that actually causes a bit of chaos in in the box it's, it's headed out to Bell with the brilliant composure just to knock it past the defender that has gone yeah. in for the block balls come in it's kind of rebounded to Potts and he smashed it in and it was brilliant in that way and when that went in but it, you look at the goal and it may would may as well have just been a tap in, but like I said, the composure from Bell and yes, you know yeah. the ball in from Bell was brilliant. The flick down, yeah, it rebounded, but it's 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 a nice goal to score. I was going to say like they said on the highlight show the other day, our um, Adi Bios flicked it on. It was more like it hit his head than he sort of like pencil <laughs> sort of headed it. And it kind of just hit the top of his head. It was well, you got the there worst first. knock on. But yeah, no, it's probably the worst knock on you'll ever see, but the best at the same time because yeah. it caused so much havoc. But now nah, that we'll take it. And that moment but, where you realise that you know one of our players were going to get to that ball first, it was it was a goal all day long. And you know, had it not gone in, you would have been absolutely mental about it. But mm-hmm. his his finish was sublime. He just he yeah, knew class. where it was going. He knew it was going in the goal. And one nil up, what, four minutes and 50 seconds, something like that? Was it around about that? Um, and you're right, the way in was good fun to be in. You think? I think you guys spoke about Dan Potts in the podcast you did when I was in Germany on tour, but he's he scored a couple of goals in pre-season. I think you, you might have even mentioned this, I can't quite remember, but he just seems to be on that kind of roll at the moment where he's getting in the right places at the right time to score fair, some goals. Fair play to him as well. I mean, we always know he can score a goal. I mean... Back in League Two season, was it? He scored something like five, six goals, was it? I mean, I might have been mistaken there, but I'm sure he scored I'm just a few. Completely made that up. <laughs> no, but to be fair, I'm, don't sure know. He, I'm sure he scored a few. But uh, look, we know Potts can score a goal. He's good in the air as well. But I'm sure we will talk about him in a little while as well. But right, right but, place, um, right time is, is yeah, is, is correct. But I'm just know, happy for him. I mean, my mate's a West Ham fan, and he texted me straight away, and he was like, "Oh yeah, Dan Potts, what a boy!" And I thought, yeah. Oh, yeah. You've still got, too much, you yeah. could be in the right place, right time at any point in the career, but you need to make sure that when you're in that position, you take advantage of it. And he did, and he does, and, you know, it's great. Burnley were always going to kind of grow into the game and, and start knocking the ball about, and they did that. And, you know, the stats don't lie, 29% possession for Luton at the end of the game, but once you've had that good 15, 20 minute start to the game, you know, it was, there was always going to be a stage where Burnley were going to start 
ramping it up and, and keeping the ball. But to be honest, they kept the ball. No shots on target in that first half. They didn't do a lot with it. But to be fair, if they didn't ramp up the pressure a little bit, you'd, you'd probably start questioning as Burnley fans as well, especially. Why aren't they doing it? Are they really poor? Because the quality they have got is is something else. And mm. like I said, if they hadn't done it, then there'd be questions to be asked about the manager, the coaching, and everything else that went with it. But look, I think... You know, these, these Luton players, the squad of Luton players now, they know, they've seen it for the last couple of years, most of them. And like I said, the new ones we brought in, they played at this level and whatever else. So they know what it takes. And they're growing wise to it now. And it's not like you can go out every single game and you can put the press on, you can attack people like left, right and centre. you just got to bide your time and carve out your opportunities wisely. That's what you have to do. But in that first half when we was watching, there wasn't many times where you just thought, oh, here comes a goal. There wasn't, um, and you've got to put that down to the brilliance of the defence as well as the keeper. I mean, did we have to make a save, a real big save in the first half? I can't remember. No, I don't think so. So I think, I think we controlled the first half more than we expected I don't to. Rec- I don't recall Horvath having a save to make, to be fair. Really. Parried a couple of crosses away, but yeah, yeah, nothing. Yeah, nothing really. We could have, I think, with a bit more composure, and I spoke about composure earlier, but when Adebayo gets through and the keeper's rushing out and realistically always oh, kind of, I know it's like all got he's got to do like I'm a pro football or anything, but like a little touch past him, he's running into an empty goal, isn't he? Yeah. Uh, or, you know, a replica of the JPT lob. Um, yeah, I, I say there, that was a big chance. If it had been a bit quicker, that's a big chance and uh, disappointed he didn't get done better with that. Yeah, definitely. Mm-hmm. I think yeah, it was all screaming for him to, to, you know, it's that little touch and he's around. And I think I said at, at the time he had, he's got nine foot legs, you know. <laughs> he should have got yeah, there yeah, first. It's, yeah, it's true. But no, no. Just for it's the record, the same. just for the record, I know his legs are not nine foot, by the way. It yeah. may as well be. Yeah. I was spider, isn't he? It was a good opportunity, though. And in, in one in the game where you think if we do take this, then that really does open up the game in, in terms of our point of view counter-attacking then well, yeah. I think maybe going into the second half that could have been the plan from Nathan Jones if we can keep this 1-0 for as long as possible Burnley are going to start throwing everyone at it and it's going to leave them open at the back and that's where you can bring on Morris and Woodrow and, and mm-hmm. kind of create some more danger but Burnley did kind of react quite quickly in that second half and we look I, at the time I looked at the guard I was a little bit disappointed looking it back on the telly he's really hit that powerfully and he brown hill yeah, yeah, but it should have been cleared originally. Mm-hmm. Well, not just that. You know, you if you if you come out if if you go went into that second half as a Luton fan thinking that wasn't going to happen or Burnley weren't going to step up that game, then you weren't watching the game right because they had to do that. Um, there was a little bit of a, a mistake. I agree with you. The clearance should have been better, but the, you can't argue with the finish. As soon as it, he hits it, you know it's going in. Yeah, you know the goalkeeper had no issues. He couldn't have got anywhere near it. Mm. It was just disappointing though that it has come from a bit of a slice clearance from Adebayo and I know the strike then this is the thing that the strike still had to be unreal and it was very powerful to beat Horvath but it could have maybe been dealt with it's a difficult one isn't it because he tried to deal with it he just didn't get right connection on it and I think you know for, for sometimes that goes into the stand and other times it just flicks off and someone else gets a chance so it's, it's a difficult one disappointing I suppose because we played so well up to that point and then to lose that goal so early in the second half that was the issue. If that had come in, yeah. you know, the 57th minute or the 65th minute, it's different. But it was like, what's again, five minutes into the second yeah. half, isn't it? And so it, it came so quickly. And then you just thought, well, we're going to have to have our backs against the wall now because the onslaught is coming. Because that's what I felt at the time, you know, how are we going to defend now? Because we are we going to get any more chances? Mm-hmm. And, you know, we need now to defend for 40 odd minutes to keep a point that we really deserve to have at that point. What did you think when that goal went in, Bizarre? What, Brownhill's goal? Yeah. I just thought, it's fucking typical of us, isn't it? We've defended so well, and we've just fucked up a clearance. That's originally what I thought, but I just thought to myself, do you know what? These things happen, I'm sure. I like to say it happened to us as well when we scored, but look, it is what it is at the end of the day. I mean, we can't be too disappointed. My only fear was in that second half, we needed to see it out, and we just needed not to concede again. And that was the biggest fear. I thought we would, like I said, we were defending great, but you knew, you knew they'd get a couple more chances. And they probably did have one, maybe two more chances. I think they Not had great some great chances. They had some big chances, but didn't. 
didn't really take him. And I think yeah. a few Burnley fans on Twitter were saying, we're going to need a new striker because yeah, yeah. having Barnes up front is not not the way to go at the moment. But He missed the city, didn't he, as well? They did have a, a few big chances in that second half. And, and our goalkeeper made a fair a couple of fair saves. Um, and, you know, that's defence, isn't it? Mm. You know, you, you, they they were solid most of the game. Yeah, big chances, but we, we weren't without our chances, were we, in the second half? And I think... Uh, Although they were very limited, though. Well, they were limited, but what we they did... Were, I don't know. I, I feel like we didn't really create anything in the second half, but they were ha- more at half chance, I suppose. We were the away team. We were riding our luck at 1-0, and, but we were playing really, really well. And then in the second half... Like you said, the onslaught started, but it wasn't it wasn't as much as I thought it would be. I thought Burnley would be stronger and faster and, and, yeah, and get more was, chances. It was all still so, about nothing, wasn't it, really, from Burnley? But they was they was always gonna have some chances and but they defended well. Goalkeeper played well and the back four played well and there's every but like I can't yeah, pick yeah. any player out and I'll go there this crap game. The only thing for me, right, the thing that really, really got me, I'm sure it got a lot of fans, I'm sure it got you boys, I'm pretty sure I heard you whinge, Dave, at some point. Yeah, I don't whinge. <laughs> yeah, of course you don't. Listen to him. But um, Jordan Clark going through on the left-hand side. Yeah. And, you know, he had time, so much time to do whatever he wanted and he decided to pass it to the goalkeeper. Just roll it to the goalkeeper. Why? That's, but that's the only thing that really got me, to be fair. One so. of those moments where you've defended so well all game and it's kind of like, can we have one more last little counter attack? And like Adebayo goes so well to get that ball back and play it through to Jordan Clark. And I think Morris was fuming. Morris and Woodrow, I think were fuming. It wasn't yeah, played across. That Clark's not played that across to him. Yeah, and it's it, I think a we very said tame day. effort. You square that ball over, it's another goal. Yeah. So I probably did actually, Vitoro, I'll give you that. I probably yeah, winched yeah, a lot yeah. on Saturday. I think I looked at your face. I think we all had a little whinge and I just saw Dave, <laughs> I, you know. I might have used some of your language at the game, yeah. Yeah, probably, possibly. Yeah, but, but um, these are glorious chances. But, you know, at least we're creating those opportunities and our players are in the right place. If, if Clark maybe looked up, looked to his right, he'd have seen that. This is the thing, I think, because we've, we've under, under, you know, pressure, but pressure without substance as such. You know, like, because that was happening to us, I think I feel like it was a bit more of a snapshot. It was more like, you know, rushed... Let's you know, yeah, go look, for it kind of thing. It, and just made it wrong. He made the wrong decision. But Clark's so. a goal scorer. He'd have wanted to get his name on that score sheet. He saw an opportunity. He just didn't hit it right, did he? Wrong opportunity. Le- well, I, I get that. But he was thinking, I could get a goal here, surely. And But he just didn't strike it well it was at just, all. He ain't going to score. From, I'm sorry, he's not going to score from there. Why is he shooting from there? He's not going to score from there. It's going to take something very special to beat, yeah. beat the keeper from there, isn't it? hundred yeah. percent, mate. Like you've got, you've got. Oh, sorry for me. You've just got to take the guy on. You've got one on one with the defender or whatever. So like all the hard take work him was on, done take there. Take down the he, line and whip yeah. it in the box, back stick, or whatever you want to do with it. And there's always opportunities. There always is someone's going to be able to get on the end of it, if possible. And I'd rather the ball go in the back post and then clear the ball from a header than him do that. I'll be honest. Why are you shooting? But look, we can't criticise Jordan Clark. We love him. So yeah, Jordan Clark player. next time. Please. <laughs> so you are criticising him a little bit. No, not at all. But <laughs> it was just, yeah, it was just poor, wasn't it? But no, look, we can't be too downright about it. But it was, it was a good performance, a great away performance, like you said, Dave. Yeah. So, so we leave to Turf Moor with a point. Would you have taken that before the game? Yeah, yeah. I, I said that before the game, and, and um, I would have taken it three times over. I think anyone would say that we got the, anything from that game is a bonus to get it in the manner that we got it even better because it gives you a little bit of hope that the team's going to move on and the next time we're going to be even better last year in the Premier League maybe not the hardest place to go but normally Burnley is one of them them stadiums where everyone goes you don't want to play Burnley on like a cold winter's night I know it wasn't a cold winter's night but it's still a tough place to go no one in the Premier League like playing Burnley everyone just bitches about Burnley every Premier League fan that I know mainly Arsenal fans always moan about Burnley yeah Everyone minds about, oh, fucking hate Burnley, they just can't really you know, play football right when they're shit. No, do you know what? They do a job. They did a job in the but this is I like watching them do it. That's that. the point. That's what we discussed uh, in our preview show uh, last last week before the game, was the fact that Burnley had to play to survive in the Premier yeah. League and they had to do what they had to do, you know. And then they probably had teams like Burnley in the Premier League, you know, that's what they yeah. got. And for us... You know, we had to do what we had to do on Saturday. If people mm-hmm. thought we had to time waste or game manage in a way, then, you know, good luck to us. We did it. And, you know, we came away happy. Well, the player we wanted to focus on this week after his goal against Burnley was Dan Potts. Is he the man to fill the left-sided centre-back role that we're missing with Cal Naismith going over to Bristol City, who, by the way, 
He's had a stinker <laughs> first two games. I don't know if you've seen what he's been doing. That's a shame, isn't it? It's yeah, almost like he's, been, he's there on a mission. He's passed the ball to the Sunderland striker to score and gave him away a penalty the week before, I believe, against, against Hull. But. Should be laughing, really, to be fair. I'm sitting laughing about it, but, you know, he was a great player for us. I don't really hold any bad feelings, so... But, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I have nothing to say. Chief uh, Jacob was asked today, is he the man to fill that left-sided role? And are we all too critical of Dan Potts? What are your thoughts? Um, I don't think he's the man to fill the left-sided role, No. I've always said he's he's better in a free at the back, but I still don't think I, I still feel like he's going to be a you know a squad player rather than more than anything. Because I'll be honest, there were times on Saturday, and like you say, I know, excuse me, I know that you know the opposition is a lot more. <laughs> get off. Just to the mic, mate. Makes me nice. feel I'm good tonight. Stop it. <laughs> but yeah, look, I feel like he um, he did well Saturday. I feel like, he, but I feel like it was times where it's just the simple stuff he did wrong. Like the, you know, the defending, he he was great. Like he backed off at the right times, and he you know he got his body there, and he didn't get turned or whatever else. But I feel like he's got a mistake in him or two, like more frequently than play, than other players. Mm-hmm. What's, what's he got to do to convince you that he is good enough? Then that's the point. And because probably, I don't know, he'd probably get man in a match a couple of times a season and just cement his place. That's all he's got to do, really. I mean, it's not up to us to decide for him. I mean, he's got to do it himself. But look. He's he's a, what are you looking at that for? Oh, sorry, I've just seen Watford have just scored from the halfway oh, line against West Brom. So why, cheers, mate. Yeah, it's fucking why? <laughs> sorry, why? but let's talk about Dan Potts. No, I know. Sorry, I just it come up from my phone. But yeah, producer Jacob's point on are we too critical of him? Um, this is a, a question we put out on on social media and, and just. I don't know, wanted to see what other people think because sometimes we have kind of said like, yeah, at the weekend there was some misplaced passes or some of the basics not done correctly. But then we see him pop up with a goal. We see him as a threat from corners. Um, Kieran says, based off what we had seen, I genuinely believe we had every right to be critical and sceptical of his ability. Uh, he, i.e. barely played in the League One winning season, jumped straight up to the championship. However, he continues to prove us wrong and I truly hope he plays well to maintain his place. I mean, I mean yeah, that's, that's, a fa- that's fair. I mean... I say he did barely play at one point, but you know, look, what else has he got? And it's like we, we don't know. He's, yes, he's a, he's a threat from corners and he can put himself about, but he's not the most. I mean, you can, is it fair to compare him to Naismith if you're gonna if he's gonna fill that void? Probably different players, isn't they? This is what I'm saying. Is it fair to that's what I'm saying? But he, is it fair to put him in that category and compare him? You you can't really do that because Naismith for me is a much better technical technically gifted footballer that's not, nothing against Dan Potts but I feel like Dan Potts is a passionate player and he loves it and he's for me he's not I do you know what? I like Dan Potts I do like him and it sounds like I'm slating him a little bit and I, I really don't want to but I think he's nowhere near a level of some players that we've had in the past I like him <laughs> you say? Yeah. I there like, we go. Yeah, I, I like him. No, I do. I like him. I, I I don't think he lets us down that much. Um, I think he's. You know, why can't he be better? So can I, can I just say, Dave? I'm not. I'm not saying he's let us down or anything. I'm no, not I'm not saying that either. I'm just saying to you, I I kind of like. I know him. you just said you liked him. I know. Obviously yeah, well, that's <laughs> all. There's nothing wrong with that. There's nothing wrong with that. No, I think. Not. I think he puts in a shift I like most him, games. Yeah. I think sometimes he's underrated. I think sometimes um, people may not give him the benefit of the doubt. That's what I'm saying. Chris says, whilst yeah. he's doing okay there, he isn't the answer. Remember last season when he dived in and gave away the pen, Sonny would be left centre-back and I'd assume we were looking at a middle centre-back. Potts is an adequate backup, but nothing more for me. Yeah, I think that's fair enough. I think Potts is a backup and I'd like to see him in and around the squad as a backup centre-half. I don't want to see him starting and I really don't want to see him at left-back either. But look, like you said, Dave likes Potts. I like Potts. I want to see him in the squad. I don't think, like, I think he's good enough to be in and around the squad. <clears throat> Excuse me. But I feel like we need to, you know, up the level a little bit. Yeah, but when you see the team sheet and you see his name on it, you don't go, oh. No, 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 no. no, no. I know. think, uh, what's, you know, Dan Potts in there, I'm sure he'll do like a half decent job today, but he's not the kind of player that's going to get you out of situations and run with the ball. I mean, Naismith used to come out with the ball and travel with it. You're not going to get that from Potts. He's not going to start attacks. He's not going to, you know what I mean, put out weldy passes. I'm sorry he's not, but. I mean, I hope he does and he proves us all, well, me wrong. It'd be great. But well, talking to that, Cat says, we were saying he isn't good enough for the squad yesterday and he only went and scored. I hope he proves me wrong. There you go. Yeah. 
Uh, Dan says, long-term Potts isn't the answer. He's a good squad player who never lets the team down. You can count on him getting six or seven out of ten every week, but we need to replace Naismith. Yeah, I think it's fair enough. And do you know what? If you don't replace Naismith, I can see Amari Bell going in the back three. I've With Doughty left wing back, because obviously yeah. he's, he's still to come back from injury and looked a hell of a player in pre-season as well. Uh, Chris says, Potsley has really stepped up and is now in possession of, start, uh, of the starting shirt. So anyone who comes in needs to put a performance in to take it. He's always done a decent job for us and been, been a great team player. I think we are tough on him. He's one of those players who does all the basics, but um, we always want a bit more. Well, that sums it yeah, up totally, yeah. doesn't it? That does actually sum it up it's totally. progression, isn't it? Yeah. yeah, because we want to move on to that next level and some players won't be coming up there with us, will they? So and Maybe we are getting ahead of ourselves a little bit. Maybe we are, I don't know. But We're fans, we do, right? Yeah. Fans, from, we always want that little bit more. last season in the side of the playoffs, we want to push on, because I know myself, right, it sounds crazy, right? People, you know, I talk to people about football all the time, and they go, oh, yeah, what are you expecting for Luton? What, another solid sort of mid-table finish? Or, cause let's face it, you're not getting into the playoffs. So I'm sitting there going, nah, I want promotion. Yeah. We want promotion. This is what it's like nowadays. We had a little taste of, you know, playoffs and whatever else. Obviously, we failed. But we want it now. We want, like, a bit of, bit of promotion. To get promotion, we have please. to. We have to have a tremendous season to, to mm-hmm. even mirror what we did last season. 100%, yeah. But the signs are there. And can Potts be part of that? Of course he can. Of and course he can. Lovely words from Vincent Company the other day. Kind of refreshing to hear that he said, yeah. you know, Luton are a playoff team. This is a good point. And, I, you know, the way they play, they're tough to play against. It's refreshing to hear a manager just talk positively about us after a game, isn't it? Yeah, because he's yeah. just a half-decent human being that understands football. He definitely understands football. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. his career, yeah. Yeah, that's I'm what I mean. He's a hun- he understands football and he knows it's not all, you know, it's not all plain sailing for certain teams and he knows obviously about the coach and I'm sure, look, look where he came from, for Christ's sakes. But yeah, no, nah, Vincent Company was, like you said, it was refreshing. It was, it was, that was music to our ears, wasn't it, really, yeah. to hear that. It's at least someone's got a bit of respect because usually I know you like to moan about it, Dave, a bit. Here we go. Moan <laughs> me again. I know you like to complain about how managers don't give us certain credit. No, the thing is, no. you've got a point as well. I'm not slating this. You have got a point. You like to say that, you know, how many managers sit there and go, oh, Luton. They didn't mention how Luton yeah, played well. Yeah, that's true enough. This yeah, that's that. true enough. And company did. Yeah, last season, it was always about how poorly they performed yeah. rather than how well we performed. Um, Saturday, you know, I think if we were still talking about Potts, he had a pretty decent game. You can't, you can't say he didn't. You know, he had a good game, and you know, the, without the goal, things have been a lot different, yeah, yeah. wouldn't they? So. Well, it was a cracking away day, a cracking point to leave Turf Moor with, and uh, looking ahead to next week's fixture is going to be a good one. If you want to hear everything about next week's fixture, then uh, get our preview podcast on Friday mornings on YouTube, Thursday night on your podcast app. Right next, we're going to be talking about. Harry Cornick, because he's... Well, the dog's going mad. Is your dog all right, mate? <laughs> yeah. Five years of Harry Cornick. He signed for the club on this day uh, in 2017. So I want to know... We'll start with you, Bataro. Your favourite Harry Cornick moment? Oh, it's hard to say. I mean, so many, but... Well, so many last season anyway. Last season before <laughs> that. But um, I, for me, like... It's probably a Gillingham moment of when he, like done the whole Gareth Bale incident and sort of like... <laughs> didn't he hit the post on that one? Yeah, mate. He didn't even yeah. score. It's probably the world's best assist like you'll ever see. World's best it? assist, but he was a good run, oh, wasn't it? Was it was amazing. I remember I was there as well. I, I, am, that goal. I remember watching that thinking, oh my God, if he scores here, this is better than mm. the Bale goal against Atletico. But And you definitely know when Cornick back then as well, he couldn't finish. You knew he was going to fuck something up. Oh, man. But yeah, he... Um, ah, brilliant. He just... I think he'd done like sort of about 40 or 50 yards... Cut inside at the post, and I think Elliot Lee was there to tap Elliot it, was he? Yeah, yeah. But no, look, obviously you've got the Leeds one. I think, Dave, you might want to say that one. But sorry. Leeds, honestly, you can't believe... And again, we went to Leeds United thinking, are we going to get a result here? You know, mm. and that goal was amazing, yeah. So that was a great goal. But you know what, right? Obviously, talking about the Leeds goal, right? I think I'd done a, a podcast with you know Leeds United, wherever it was, yeah. their podcast or whatever, that, that, that same day in, that, in the morning... And they went, who's your player to watch? And I went, Harry Cornick. I said, if we can get him through and go, he'll score because he's got pace to burn. And they kind of sort of, like, I think they took the piss at me a little bit. And um, yeah, what happened? He went and scored, didn't he? That was a weldy. Yeah. So yeah. Five years of Harry Cornick. He He's brilliant. Isn't he? He's definitely grown as a player, hasn't he? And, you know, we're talking with Potts being one of the longest serving and with Pelly and Harry Cornick, five years. It's a long time to be at a football club. And it's, it's definitely a club now that must feel like a home for him. Oh mate, honestly, like I'm, I'm so happy he plays for us as well. He's, he's quality, isn't he? 
he's, you know, obviously in the past he got criticised and he couldn't finish, he couldn't do this, he couldn't do that. But you know, for one thing, he always put in 100% and he always scared defenders because he has pace. Well, I think the pace is, is one of his greatest attributes, mm-hmm. really. And I always look forward when he gets more, he goes on a run. And I think hey, he's going to win that all the time, you know, until he gets ultra knackered because he runs so much in a game. Yeah. But that's what substitutes are for, aren't it? So This is it, all game changers, Nathan Jones yeah. says, but yeah. All right, game changers no, if you want to call them that, I'm Nathan. Jo- but no, I'm substitutes. Not, not me. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think I think he's he's a great player, and you know I, I don't mind seeing him on the starting lineup ever. I think you know, oh, I'll call it Tom. Oh, yeah. He'll give us some, he'll I'll give us honest, something. I, do you know what? No, no, I've got even better moment. I've got even better moment against Millwall when he scored. Well, last season. Oh wow! Two yeah, brilliant yeah. goals. That first yeah, one yeah. was unreal. I think the second one really cemented it. I was just like, that'll do. <laughs> just Harry Cornick, and I was just like, oh, this guy, because. You know, I've always been a fan of Cornick, and every slate saying he wasn't good enough and whatever else. I'm just happy he's doing it now. And he just seems like a decent guy, doesn't he? Like, yeah. It's what you need at your club, someone like that. Just enjoying his football, getting on with life, and you know, just having a good time. Yeah, that's it. And you need decent human beings at your football club. And I feel like the team respects him as well. I think, I think a lot more of our fans respect him nowadays as well, whereas they didn't. I but think well, you say they didn't. I think it was a frustration that, that when he was on those clearance, you know, those clear opportunities when you just have to go, you go across the goalkeeper, you score, and he takes the wrong option. I think that frustrated a few people, but he's past that, isn't he? I think so, yeah. I'd, I'd like to think so. Even, like that, think even so. that Birmingham goal as well. I just thought well, that was a good moment, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah that was a brilliant finish. goal. Birmingham away. 2 yeah, just, 1 loss, I think. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, we asked you what's your favourite moment of Harry Cornick since he signed on this day in 2017 Toby says maybe not his finest but the most crucial was winning the penalty against Blackburn to stay up oh bloody hell oh, yeah see we didn't think of that no we? you see don't think of that do you wow yeah I go with that Dave says probably that Leeds goal and their supporters reaction after don't really mm. recall the reaction after but that Leeds goal was uh, stunning unreal and you just kind of wish if we had some fans in that stadium that night we did. Oh, we had some cardboard cutouts. <laughs> well, they are cardboard cuts? No, nah, not Definitely that ones probably, there. but, you know, they're fans anyway. They're probably ones moaning and cardboard oh, cutouts and mouths. Just see, John said, sorry, Bataro, John said the same as you, that run against Gillingham was Gareth Bale-esque. No, we all knew it, to be fair. Like, it was ridiculous, wasn't it? I mean, against Gillingham. I don't know who Bale was playing against. <laughs> probably like, What's in Gillingham? Yeah, exactly. But I'm real, wasn't it? Well, can Gareth Bale do it on a cold Saturday night in Gillingham? No, probably not. Probably not. That's, the, that's the answer to that. With a stand held up by... Um, <laughs> scaffolding. Scaffolding, yeah. Darren says, his brace against Mill last year was pretty decent, to be fair, especially the first goal. Literally just touched on that. So yeah. lovely. Luton Reporter says, Exeter away. Is that the one we was at? Yeah, in, in, in the home end, yeah. Did he score? I think he scored a header that day. No. Let little, 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 little header into the, into the corner. Did he? Yeah. From yeah. Well, he don't score headers. He's too concerned about his hair spray <laughs> and whatever else. Well, he did score ahead of oh, a great yeah. goal, great game that as well. Uh, Neil says Chelsea at home for me. Didn't think he was even good enough for League One um, way back then. Boy has proven me wrong. Damn good player. Yeah, yeah. The one against through. Chelsea impressed me because it's like you said, Dave. There's times where he's been through one on one in the past, but yeah. this time he made no mistake. He was confident, ran through. It was like he knew what he was going to do. It was no like waiting around, just slotted it past keeper. Did you think when he got that chance? Though, did you think, oh, he's really got to put this one away? I think that when anyone gets clean through, I'm like, they've yeah. got to score this. But, you, but you, beating you, the offside you, trap was more impressive. A big one? Yeah. Beating the offside trap was more impressive, yeah. I think. But he was very sound that day. Mm-hmm. Hey, brilliant. So that just shows how far he's come along. There's so many good moments as well with Cornick as well. I mean, as many as there are bad moments where he's missed some sitters, there are some great moments as well. Like, If not more, there are more great moments, obviously, but... Gary says his best goal leads away followed by Chelsea my favourite though was the comeback winner against Bristol City for his only goal of the season special mention to the cheeky Reading goal do you want to remind me of that one I think it's the Bristol City 3-2 game where we were 2-0 down at half time and won 3-2 he scored his only goal of the season that day I think so I can't remember the goals to be fair do you feel the same as me with that lockdown season you just kind of don't remember the games from that year. Because we weren't there. Yeah. Uh, when you're there, it's different, isn't it? You, know, you can recount most games that you've been at watching live. We came back from 2-0 down against Sheffield Wednesday, didn't we, as well, that season? Yeah, at home. I remember that. I, I can't tell you. Don't so. remember the Bristol Ju- City one? Jewsbury Hall scored? Jewsbury Hall scored 
away at QPR when we lost 3-1 on the last game of the season. That game completely doesn't exist in my head oh, anymore no, either. I can't remember There's that. a few from that season. To be fair, I think it was all steaming I, out there. What yeah, we yeah, beer, Do you know what it was? Yeah, yeah. That day when we played QPR last game of the season, we had that on this computer here and we had Derby v Sheffield Wednesday on the yes, big TV and that yes. was like 5-4 and it was like winner stays up. So Yeah, 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 yeah. that was more fun. Yeah, I think that was more fun. But no, Harry Cornick, what a legend. Five years of Harry Cornick. Let us know what your favourite Harry Cornick moment is. On Twitter, I win the town. Do you know what? I get? Not, obviously, not his footballing ability, but one of the best moments of Harry Cornick has got to be his ble- bleached blonde hair. Pre <laughs> season. Oh, well, wow. as a Harry Cornick tribute, why don't you get your style <laughs> like that? Absolutely not. Someone asked you about your toe the other day, mate. Yeah, they How's did, that getting yeah. on? Yeah, it's, it's getting there, to be fair. I said he just goes. It's the artwork. Goes away from the mic when you talk about that. <laughs> um, oh, dear. Cup game tonight, when you're listening to this, it'll be Newport County hoping to get. Get through and get a nice tie, are we? Oh, let's let's hope that we've got it in us to to get past them. You shouldn't again underestimate any team in the cup. However, we have the squad big enough to to make sure we get through and hopefully comfortably. Who do you want in the next round? I'll be honest, I don't really care. If that sounds like a dick, I don't really care because at the end of the day, whoever we get, it is what it is. We're more than capable of beating a lot of teams in this competition at the moment, aren't we? That's the way yeah. I look at it. Do, do we want Especially at home. Is it Premier be... League around? Is it Premier League teams around next as well? Premier League teams not in Europe. So. I would like to think we have a nice cup run. West Ham away then. I think they're in nice. Europe, aren't they? Are they in Europe? I think they're in like qualifying, aren't they? Oh, are they? I don't know. To be fair, so I made that one last up. year. Oh, okay, then. So probably, yeah, not going to happen then. Give us Brent, we'll Brentford, Brentford away and you yeah, can all say, yeah, Brentford can, away we can all come and watch you do your and job we can all kick the shit yeah. out of you Gregory that's fine mate don't worry about it hey if we get Brentford, if stuff. we do get draw Brentford away make sure you're not working uh, yeah I'll be in the away and don't you worry uh, he'll be working Dave so he gets a free ticket doesn't he into the ground he'll be fine no he won't be working that I'll day. just use my accreditation to jump in the away and I suppose at least if Brentford, if Brentford beat us in the cup he can go oh yeah I support Brentford no, yeah. <laughs> that would not happen though would it let's be honest that wouldn't happen I just would never hear the end of it from it's my girlfriend it's alright Brian so. and Wayne run over Tony don't worry about it <laughs> okay. we won on that note we're going to end it there uh, thank you so much for listening today join us on Thursday and Friday Thursday for audio Friday for video for our preview podcast where we'll be chatting to two Preston North End fans it's going to be a good one so make sure you join the extent thank you so much for listening today Thank you so much for watching. And I think Dave wanted to say something. <laughs> we oh, yeah. No, I just, I just, uh, I just noticed on um, Twitter actually that uh, there's a kit drop off needed. If you've got any spare kit from last season, um, shorts or ch- shirt shorts or football boots or anything like that, then the Luton Town ladies, I think it's youth team, um, are looking for help. They, they're asking you to drop off. Check out the social media at LTFCYT. And uh, hopefully you can help them. LTL FC YT. Plug that one well. Well, yeah, the shirt, at least I'm doing it. So shirt, shorts and boots and shin pads. If you've got any spare, there's a drop-off point uh, they, at Lancaster Avenue. So I'll tell you what we need up. to do. We'll get producer Jacob to uh, do a tweet about that. Because they could probably yeah. tweet it better than I spoke it. Yeah, 100%. <laughs> so look out for that Twitter, to a fair, tweet yeah. from producer Jacob. So they wouldn't want my old kits anyway because I sweat too much. Oh, <laughs> white stains on your armpits. <laughs> <God> <laughs> gracious. Sorry, but yeah, it's, it's, uh, it's a good thing though. All right. Not, that, not the sweat, I mean... <laughs> can we get, can we, can we, I want to finish now I'm going alright thanks so much for listening everyone and we'll see you soon